In part two of the Arcade 1UP Pinball Modding Project, we're going to pick up where we left off and I'm going to show you how to install a third monitor on your Arcade 1UP Pinball machines. Now it goes without saying that you will need a PC that does support at least three output displays, so once you've got that arranged and figured out, you'll be good to go. Personally, I went with this Acer model and I cannot stress how perfectly this thing fits inside the stock back box display. And the price, very good in my opinion. It was around $91 free shipping on Amazon. Got this in two days, fits like an absolute dream. Let me show you how to install it. All right, took the screws out. I'm gonna take this top panel off. We'll be able to get this LED board out. And then it's just a matter of prying out the graphic. And there we go. Now we've got all this space to put our monitor in. All right, put the LED board back in there. Technically, you don't have to do this. You could flip it around. Um, you could place it in there backwards and put a new, you know, graphic plexiglass on here and have it shining different colors. But honestly, I'm just not going to use it. Uh, I, I just prefer that clean black look. So it's, it's in here for support and structure, but I'm not actually going to be using it. So I won't be plugging in the power cord. What I've got here is the power cord for the monitor as well as HDMI cable that will be going into the back of the monitor. And then I have my Acer display. And the reason I went for this thing is because it literally fits like an absolute glove and it almost looks stock. I mean, it literally fits as close to perfect as you could possibly get inside the stock housing of the Arcade 1UP back box. Now, as far as how I'm going to secure the monitor in here, it's actually going to be one of the easiest installations ever. Like I said, this thing fits almost perfectly as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some double-sided 3M tape along the top here. And then I'm going to put just a little here in each corner. And then when I screw the side panels in there, it will give it enough force to hold it in the sides. The 3M tape will keep the top of the monitor from falling forward. And down here, we'll make sure it's nice and secure. And one last measure of security. I've got one of these generic L brackets that you can find at any hardware store. I'm gonna put some 3M tape, stick it on the back side of the monitor, and then I will put some screws through the bottom into the F panel down here. That way it's nice and secure. Also making sure that I leave enough room for the buttons on the bottom of the monitor. That way they are sticking out over the front of the ledge and not being compressed into the bottom there. Otherwise it would force the monitor to turn itself off and I don't want that to happen. So keep that in mind when you're installing this monitor if you want to go that route. All right, double-sided tape applied. Screws are nice and tight here on the side. Let's give it the moment of truth test. Yep, not going anywhere. Like I said, nice and flush. Looks like it is stocked that way from the factory. Got a nice clean edge along the top so you can put action figures, whatever you want on top. A nice little topper still. Still got these same bolts and everything lined up here on the sides. I mean, everything fits very, very beautifully. I'm exactly, exactly how I wanted this to look. Uh, and that's really why I went with this monitor. Like I said, I did a lot of research, did a lot of measurements. This, in my opinion, is going to be the best monitor, best bang for your buck, as well as the best fitting monitor if you want to do this type of, you know, modification. Now, you don't have to mount it the way I did. You can mount it however you see fit. This is just a quick down and dirty way to get this in here and get you up and running and playing pinball sooner than later. So now I've got the monitor in there. And one interesting little thing I did was I actually took a picture of my original back glass formatted it into a large PNG image, uploaded the file, and created that as my stock back glass. So when FX3 opens up and my PC starts up and everything, it technically looks like the stock machine. So this is not, you know, illuminated marquee. This is just a picture of it. So that was a neat little thing I decided to do. But anytime you select a table, you just go in there and it changes automatically with whatever game I want to play. All these look great. I'm sure there's somebody out there freaking out because I actually stretched these images, um, but I don't care. I wanted to fill up the entire screen and it's just a stagnant image as possible, but some really good looking back glass images that come up for any game I select. And overall, I gotta say, this is probably my favorite part of the mod in total. So in part one of the video, we had everything hooked up and connected as far as our controls to a generic bare bones, zero delay encoder. Now that was fine and dandy to get us, you know, just up and running and get some basic controls working. Now, if you want a little more thrills, a little more frills, this is the encoder board I highly suggest you go out and get. This is the KL25Z 
aka Z for the American audiences, um, circuit board. Now this thing has a built-in accelerometer, so that's awesome. And it's also reasonably priced, anywhere from $25 to $35 from most manufacturers. I'll put links down in the video description box below so you can find in everything you want. However, yours will look different than mine depending on where you buy it, because for the most part, None of these places sell this with the headers installed. It is just a bare bones board with the open connections and you will have to solder on your own connectors or you can actually solder on bare wires into the contact points. This thing has the ability to hook up to 32 buttons, which is a metric crap ton. I don't know why I'm quoting the metric system because I'm an American and we don't give a crap about the metric system. But anyways, a metric crap ton of buttons. So 32 buttons in total. Uh, I can't imagine a scenario where you would need 32 buttons on a virtual pinball cabinet. But regardless, this thing is very easy, very robust. It connects to the PC via USB. So the only real tricky thing about this board is deciding how much time and energy you want to spend pre-setting everything up. So if you want to solder on bare wire, do you want to solder on headers, or you do want to pay a little extra and get it all you know, situated for you right out of the box. Now you got multiple options and this is where it's kind of a choose your own adventures type of thing. So to get the stock plunger, so this is the stock plunger pulled out of the machine. If you want this to work with this board, you will essentially have to buy a little potentiometer, um, rig it up to where it sits underneath this, connect it to the plunger with a little cotter pin of some sort. So when you pull back on the plunger, it pulls back on the slider of the potentiometer. You can do that for about $50 in part. You throw in, you know, this, that's another 25 to $30. You're looking around 80 to $90 in parts and accessories to get the stock plunger to work with a KL 25Z board. There's also additional options out there that are kind of a plug and play all in one kit. Specifically, the one I went with for this video was the Virtua Pen plug and play kit has all the headers installed on the board. So that's why it looks like this. It gave me a new plunger, all the wires and everything is literally plug and play. It took me about five minutes to install lickety split. It is $160, which is overpriced in my opinion. But then again, you just kind of have to make that decision. Ask yourself, do you want to spend time sitting there on a workbench soldering things, or do you just want to get to playing pinball? So you make that decision. I'll put all the parts and accessories for the different methods you can do, whether it be the cheap version or the more expensive version down in the video description box below. But let me tell you specifically about this plunger because it was a little bit different to hook up. So for starters, the stock plunger on the arcade one-up machine, the shaft and everything. God, I was really hoping I could go the whole video without saying shaft, but this, it's, it's pretty good. It's not terrible. It's not the best by any means. Obviously, you know, some commercial grade plungers are gonna be better, but it does well enough. However, the one that does ship in this virtual pin kit is a little better, a little more robust, and it definitely has a nice snap to it. Stock plunger, virtual pin plunger much more robust. Um, it looks identical shape, form, and factor, almost everything. Um, the, the shooter end is the exact same size. The base, the metal bracket, everything is the same size. The only thing that differs is inside the plunger, so to speak. So right in here, there's a couple of like little bitty weld points, you could say, up by where the mounting brackets are. So if you try to get the virtual pen plunger to fit into the cabinet, you won't be able to because it'll hit a couple of parts on the cabinet where that wood is that this is typically not an issue with because it lets it recess all the way. So what I had to do was I got a hacksaw blade, put it inside the machine and just kind of wallered out a couple of little slots in there and basically made these stock mounting holes shaped like a T. And then I was able to get the virtual pen plunger in there, piece of cake, mounted it, everything was hunky dory. All right, so we have a look at the KL25Z board just sitting there in the base of my cabinet. I haven't screwed it down or installed it permanently yet. I just got it in there so I can kind of show you the basics of how everything is connected. So like I said, I sprung for the full on virtual pen plunger kit that came with the headers installed, um, the, the circuit, wires, cables, everything is literally plug and play. So the way it sets up is the physical plunger has been installed. It also comes with an IR sensor tube that slides over the physical shaft. And then it has a connection point here. You plug in the provided connection point if you buy the kit and it plugs into a corresponding port there on the board. And then another one was just a header board that had a bunch of bare exposed wires. And I just took one exposed in, plugged it into you know, terminals of the micro switches. I did reuse the stock Arcade 1UP NBA Jam buttons that I had installed for Nudge, 
but I did actually put some nice stock hat buttons up here with some cherry micro switches just because the flippers specifically I'm going to be using more often than anything else and I wanted some nice solid buttons with some nice quiet micro switches so it didn't you know wake the whole house up when I was playing pinball. Color coding on the wire doesn't really matter. Like I said, this board has so many different connections. Nothing fancy as far as the wiring. Um, I haven't even done any like wire cleanup. That's why it's all sitting here because I'm not ready to permanently install it yet. But you basically just take your colored wire, take it over to your micro switch, one prong, then you're gonna have a common ground. You're gonna daisy chain all your grounds together so they connect to all your buttons. So this ground goes from here, down to the button down there, and then over to there and there, and then it all comes back to the single black ground wire that goes back into the circuit board. I can, you know, reprogram this, what I'll show you later in a different software program to correspond with the button. So it doesn't matter. Orange doesn't have to go to a flipper. It doesn't have to go at a nudge. I could literally take whatever color I wanted, connect it to whatever button terminal. So that was nice and easy to do. Now, one particular thing you'll want to keep in mind if you do go with this board and you're installing it into your cabinet is the orientation of where the USB ports are. So. Typically, if you're gonna be using it like in this particular setup, you want the USB ports facing to the left and you want it flush and nice and flat. You don't want it cockeyed or anything. You want it nice and level. That way, when you're activating the accelerometer, it's getting a good reading and it's not askewed by being you know, tilted sideways or posted on the side of your cabinet. You want it flat and you want the USB ports facing the left side of the cabinet body. Like I said, it does connect to the computer via USB. I've just got my computer sitting on the table there so I could have more room to show you. But let me show you how this is all talking to the computer and how the button configuration setup works. So as always, there's more ways to skin a cat. You don't technically have to do what I'm gonna show you right here, but previously we used Joy to Key and that you know cheap zero delay encoder. Now that we've got this different encoder, we're gonna be using X360CE, basically Xbox 360 controller emulator. It's gonna interpret all of our button commands and correspond them into what it would be if I was playing FX3 with an Xbox controller. So it starts out blank. What you basically have to do is just make sure your board is plugged in and registered on the computer. And then you're gonna be corresponding whatever buttons you want with corresponding um, action inputs on the Xbox 360 controller. If you're not familiar with that and you need to know what the default commands are, just go into FX3, go into your options, switch it over to where it pulls up the Xbox controller options and it'll show you what the buttons typically are. So like your triggers are typically gonna be your flippers, your bumpers are typically gonna be um, your nudge buttons and so on and so forth. Once you've got an idea of those, then you can you know, know which buttons you need to set commands for. Now, as far as how to figure out what button is what, there's actually a secondary software program that actually is free that is part of the KL25Z support from VirtuaPen. This is their own little virtual pin controller. So basically, as soon as you plug in board into your PC, connect it with USB, you should be able to register it. So like, as I shake the table, you should see the tilt X and Y. Yeah, you see them moving there. And same thing with a plunger. As I pull it back, this should go up. So yeah, that, that lets you know that everything is working good. And now how I find out what button numbers I need to put in here, I'm just gonna be pushing my buttons and you'll see them light up. So my right flipper is gonna be button number eight. So what I would do is I'd go back to, you know, my Xbox controller CE. I would find the right trigger and then I would click the drop down box and I would select button number eight and so on and so forth. And I fill everything out until I've got all my controls mapped. Uh, I've mapped the D-pad also to be my buttons and flippers uh, just so I can navigate the menus, go up and down, left and right. And here's an important part as far as the plunger. So to get the plunger working, so you'll need to map it to the joystick. So your stick axis Y will be inverted. So I've got it over here and over here, but make sure it's inverted. And that allows me, so when I pull back the plunger, you'll see it goes down on the thumbstick. And that's how FX3 knows to pull back the plunger. So one thing to note is that Xbox 360 CE, this will always need to be running in the background anytime you're playing FX3. Now, as far as how I got the accelerometer to work, I was actually using DOF links. Now I will link videos and links and information about DOF links down in the video description box below, specifically ones that pertain to setting up 
analog nudge type of capabilities for your cabinet just because this video right now is a little too long in my opinion and it, it would take me a while to explain in fully doff links but doff links i'll show you the settings what i had to do and i'll give you some information down there in case you want to go down that route and then last video i had my dmd monitor stacked on top of number one there so it was like one two since i've got three monitors it's always best to cascade them left to right like this so i've got monitor one monitor two for my small screen and then my back glass number three all of them are set to 100 percent scale in their native resolution so my two main monitors are 1920 by 1080p and then my secondary dmd here is 800 by 480 so make sure you configure that accordingly it's just going to make your life so much easier when you start messing with things like vpx future pinball pin up players stuff like that show you a little bit about the physical nudging thanks to the accelerometer that's built into the kl25z board so i do have my nudge buttons so i got one over here on the right one on the left so see i can still physically push those nudge buttons or i can slap the table now tilt it real quick because I got my sensitivity turned down a little too much or turned up rather but it does work really nice in fact let me show you the plunger now that we're here so we got the plunger so it pulls back forward back let her rip and that does it for part two of modding the arcade one up pinball machines now the final video well scratch that the next video we'll see we'll see we may get crazy and do a couple more but the next video in the series will be solely focused on haptic feedback inside this machine so that one is a little bit more tricky a little more confusing for the common person so that one i'll just have a dedicated video all together anyways i hope you enjoyed the content hope you found the information helpful if you did make sure you hit that like button share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful and as always Thanks for watching, guys. Really means a lot.